yeah. All right. Uh, so while everyone's jumping in, I'm just going to review what we'll be covering today. Uh, if you're in health, safety, and compliance, then you're in the right place. This webinar is going to be geared towards you, the work that you do. Um, specifically, if you're new to EDA, I think this is going to be a huge value add. If you already know your way around the platform, this might not be the webinar for you unless you've got some great questions for us and you want us to demonstrate that. Uh, we're all for that. All right. So what specifically are we going to be looking at today? So we're going to be focusing on content library. This is a, a library of over 700 courses. Um, dozens or maybe even hundreds of which uh, are relevant to health, safety, and compliance that you can use, take, rebrand, edit, and redeploy to your teams. And I know I just mentioned like five steps there. That only takes a few minutes. Uh, we're actually going to do it today over the course of the next 45, right? Uh, so you'll be able to see how that works. We're going to look at ways in which you can track features that are really relevant to compliance. And that's like the certificates live sessions, analytics, software features that do a really great job at replacing uh, or it adding, you know, adding to live in-person classroom sessions or PowerPoints or slide decks, traditional methods that you might be using to deliver this material. And then lastly, we'll be taking a look at trading your training, which is a really great tool uh, for you to take those PowerPoints that I just mentioned that you probably already have that you're delivering on things like hazard communications, workplace safety, and job site standard operating procedures, and transform those processes, those PowerPoints, those slide decks into engaging micro lessons, either automatically or even manually by our instructional design team. So I'll explain the way that that works, um, although it's really not that complicated. All right, let's kick it off. Mm. So first things first, if you are brand new to the platform, you're not sure what EdApp does or even what an LMS does, uh, it's four things, right? So we've got a learner's app. This gives you the ability to deploy lessons, learning, content, really whatever it is that you need to get across to an audience. And this can be done through a mobile application that we deliver. It, can be all, it also can be done through a web app. So anyone with access to a browser has the ability to learn from you, right? This is the content that you're developing or the content that you're getting from the content library. Now, a couple of features with the platform is the ability for offline mode. So if you have to deliver you know, training on site away from like the internet uh, or something like that, we have the ability for peer learning. So your audience, your cohorts can interact with each other. You can let the best teach the rest, if you will. Uh, and we've got great features like briefcase uh, for appending documents that might be really relevant to a compliance course, for example, or space repetition and rapid refresh, which is perfect for recall if you're doing safety recertification. Uh, on the other side of the coin for the admins, we've got the authoring tool. The authoring tool when it comes to EdApp gives you the ability to create lessons, create training, create interactive e-learning content, and it doesn't take a lot of time or expertise. The authoring tool uh, on EdApp is template-based. So all you have to do is just pick which 10 to 15 templates that you want in your lesson, enter the text and the image and the video assets right where they need to be. Uh, it's really just fill in the blank and your lesson is done. You don't need design skill. Um, you don't need to know your way around a really complicated authoring tool uh, or co comprehensive lesson design system. It's just fill in the blank. We won't be taking a look at the authoring tool today, but uh, we'll show you what content is, uh, what, what kind of content you have the capability to build. Moving forward, editable course library, briefly mentioned this before, but we've got a, a course library full of free content, all of it is free, with topics ranging from operations to compliance, sales, leadership, well being. Um, it's literally hundreds of courses. And you can take these courses, rebrand them, and redeploy them to your team. Uh, you don't even need a credit card or even an email address to look at this training um, and discover whether or not it's relevant to, to what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, all of that's on EdApp, and it's, it's there for the taking. And then administration, right? So this is going to be really relevant to some of those compliance-focused deployments. We've got features like analytics and reports. They're really robust. So you can see uh, in a really clear way without too much effort, 
who's done what and how well. Obviously, that's really important. But we also have really great features like certificate delivery. It, that's done in an automated way without manual fulfillment on your end. Uh, we'll just ferry off certificates to whoever's completed your training. We've got great integrations. We've got course management uh, and the ability, of course, for you to deploy uh, to users and manage those users without you know, too much effort. I know that's the mantra today is lack, lack of effort. Uh, <laughs> Without too much difficulty, I should say. All right, so let's you know highlight a, a few client use cases before we jump into the live app demo. McKay Drilling, uh, setting the standard in Australia. For those of you who may not be familiar, they also operate globally, but they're based in Australia, much like EdApp actually. The biggest issue that McKay Drilling faced before deploying EdApp was a dispersed workforce at scale. And uh, this might sound familiar to you, but what they were doing prior to delivering EdApp was gathering all of their employees up in a room and delivering a slideshow, right? And this works if you've got 10 or 15 employees, it doesn't really work that well if you have 10 or 15,000. Uh, so what we've done is given them the ability to take those PowerPoints, turn them into lessons and deliver those to everyone's tablets, phones and laptops. Uh, so what we can do is scale up this process of training and have a lot less time spent and a lot less money spent because if everyone's spending a lot less time, um, that's a shorter payroll. Moving forward, Trailer Industrial, really interesting use case here. What Trailer Industrial was able to accomplish with EdApp uh, was to deliver a training program in a very short amount of weeks by using the content from our library, retooling it, rebranding it, and delivering it to their audience. Um, and since then, they've been able to create some great bespoke stuff of their own once they've sort of gotten the hang of things. Um, but material like lockout, tagout, confined spaces, or working at heights was enough for them to launch a training program um, right from the get-go. And all of that is there in the content library. We'll be taking a look at it later. And then lastly, Zypex, um, one of the world's foremost cement uh, product, cement product, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Anyway, they work with cement products um, and the challenge Zypex had was with compliance and product knowledge organization wide. Um, now this is something that we've seen a bit of resistance for in this industry, but that's employees using their personal mobile dev devices. But what Zypex was able to do is allow everyone, if they would like, to use their mobile devices to take EdApp content. And they found through surveys, through user feedback, um, that this was the vastly preferred method for their employees to be receiving training. Um, they had a phenomenal experience on their personal mobile devices, taking content, quizzes, interacting with their e-learning modules. Uh, and it really changed the way that Zypex was thinking about how their training can be accessed. Great. Um, and then last but not least, I just want to, before we move on to the demo and I'll hand it over to Jess, I just want to shout out Training New Training. Um, if, if you want to bring us to the next slide here, Jess. Training New Training is a phenomenal program that we've just recently started with EdApp. If you're on the last webinar, you know all about it. But we've got these two great options for PowerPoints now. And if you have PowerPoint slides, you're in the right place. You can convert those to micro lessons instantly it doesn't work super well, right? Because PowerPoints are kind of stagnant. There's not uh, interactions or quizzes or games in a PowerPoint. However, our authoring tool will allow you to add those things really quickly. Um, and that's if you're using the convert. Now, if you don't know how to do that, and if you need some help getting your program off the ground for your first few lessons, then let us do it for you. So that's where trading your training comes in. And you'll see that convert and design button right here on the screen. And Jess is going to point it out in our authoring tool as well, but you'll see, you see that convert and design button. What that does is it gives you the option to upload that PowerPoint. It gets sent off to one of our professional instructional designers. They'll review that, build the lesson for you, drop it into your course. Now, this doesn't cost anything. All we want to do is help you deliver content to your learners as quickly as possible. I know it sounds like there might be a catch there, but there's not. <laughs> uh, great. So, oh, by the way, thanks for this. Looks like Bobby just dropped the link for trading your training in the chat. So I highly recommend everyone opens that up and saves that for later. Cool. So um, what's, what does this mean? If you've got content 
if you have, uh, sorry, if you have access to content from our content library, and if you have the ability to transform some pre-existing SOP or, or training slide decks that you probably already have, well, it doesn't take you very long to have a fully fed, fledged online program that you can deliver to your audience. As a matter of fact, we think it should only take you a few days. So um, we're gonna show you what this process looks like, how you can access this content, how you can upload content. Um, we're gonna be jumping into a live demo now. And I just have to ask everyone, if you have questions, let me know. Um, and uh, I, uh, I will be as graceful as possible interrupting you, Jess, to deliver those questions uh -huh. and uh, answer them live. Fantastic. So yeah, let's go through um, and onto the live app demo. Perfect. So how are we looking? Seeing the um, courseware library? Yep, you look yep. great. Fantastic. Just wanted to double check after the whole going on mute palaver. Just wanted to double check we're in the right spot. If so you yeah, can't always trust you. I am. I mean, I'm one hundred percent. But yeah, fantastic. Um, so for everyone who's joining us on the webinar today, and some of you who might be newer to EDAP, we're going to be going through essentially a walkthrough of being able to look at our starting points for creating content, going through the content library, or even converting your existing training, and just doing a little bit of an overview. So some of the points being taking some of this training that we've brought in from the content library, looking at the access rules around this, having a look at who we're going to be sharing this content with, setting some um, course completion certificates so we know who's completed those courses, they've got something there tangible for them to show and say that they've completed it, and then also look at the analytics, so keeping track of your users, so who's completed which courses, how user groups might be performing, or even how specific courses are performing to see those strengths and weaknesses there as well. So yeah, I think the best place to start right now is actually where we are, and that's our courseware tab here under courses. So you can see we've got a few here. And like I said, there's a few different starting points for getting started with your EDAP journey. Now, these are usually these three buttons along the top here, starting with our PPT conversion tool. And if you're wanting to go through trade in your training, this is a great way to get started. So we've got this option for an immediate conversion where we can just simply upload our PowerPoint. It's gonna pull those images and text, or we can even send it off to the experts and let the designers actually create this for us. And like we said, that's absolutely free. So definitely make use of this um, feature. And then we've got our content library, which we'll be hopping into in, um, into in a moment. And then also if we wanted to create a course from scratch, we could do so just using this blue button here. Now, these are getting started with creating courses and courseware, but we also have the option to create a rapid refresh quiz, which is similar to a form of 20 questions. They're incredibly easy for you to be able to set up to begin quizzing your users. It's all it takes is just pressing this little button here, which is the create a quiz. We can download a Excel template to fill in with our questions and our multiple choice answers, and then just upload that into EDAP and we're going to do the heavy lifting again. So you can set the cadence, whether you want it to be five questions every Monday for the next four weeks, or if you want all these questions to go out in one quiz. And for your users, they're going to get a handy push notification as well, telling them this quiz is ready. And later on during the session, we're actually going to go through the analytical report for Rapid Refresh, where we can start to look at those questions that have been asked, our users, and then individual answers that have been given. So this could be great for maybe a refresher course, or actually just testing your users' knowledge on some of these health and safety topics that have been covered in our standard courseware. So I'm going to actually take us back now to our courses tab just here. And we're actually going to have a look in the content library search for our health and safety courses, bring one in, and I can show you how easy it is for it to actually start kind of editing this content. We can add a logo if we want it, and then also sharing this with our users. So this black button here, browse content library, and you feel free to scroll through the content library. There's a range of different subject matter and different topics. And you can see here, we've got some trended courses around um, kind of climate systems and um, sustainability. We've got our manufacturing courses, 
we're actually just going to, for the sake of this, search safety within our search bar. And this is going to bring up some of those different health and safety related courses, as well as some of our construction. And you can see there's a great range here. So all these white courses, they're free for you to bring in, they're editable. So if you found that we've got this utility knife safety course, it might be that some of your team having to use safety knives and this course is this great for you, but there's a few little bits that you want to make it more relevant to your business. So you could easily make edits and changes. So I'm actually gonna select this course here and let's bring it into our, uh, into our course library. So again, just this blue button, import selected course. Brilliant. So that's brought it in now into our course library. And as you can see at the moment, it's in draft mode. So if we had any users right now within the account, this wouldn't be available for them to see until we press this little toggle here, which would make it published. So if we were wanting to make any changes or adjustments, or even add a little bit of branding, we can keep it in draft mode. We can keep that private from the users until it's ready for them to see. So now what we're gonna do is actually open up this course and start to have a look at some of the little edits and changes we can make and actually how it's constructed. So right now we're on what we call our course view. So what we can see here with this lessons tab is pretty much what it says on the tin. This is a breakdown of the lessons that make up this course. So we've got four different lessons here. And actually, for, for the sake of this webinar, we're not going to go so much into the authoring side of things. It's going to be more around how we can start to look at which users are going to have access to this course and also when. So I'm going to just quickly skate over our branding tab. If you were wanting to perhaps add a company logo, you can do here, either using our integration with Canva or even just simply uploading the image. But for the purpose of this, I actually want to highlight one of our main areas, which is the access rules here. So this is where we can start to look at dates and who actually has access to this course. So whether this be that this course is, has dates determined when it can be accessed. So you could easily tick this and select if you had a end date that you wanted all of these courses to be completed by for compliance purposes, you could easily set that date there and when this course is available. Another great one is actually setting this course as mandatory. So this course has to be taken. It's not optional. And also if there's a, that due date. So again, for if there's a harsh deadline um, for compliance, or you're just wanting to know that they have this ready um, for a certain date, perhaps they're starting a new job on site and this is training relevant to working on that site. Now, if I scroll this down a little bit as well, I'm just gonna highlight the option here for user groups. Now, if you're not aware of user groups, this is one of our pro features, but it's a really great way of being able to segment your users and specify what content's available for them. So say for example, you might have multiple work sites and you're wanting to organize your users by their specific work site. You can easily do so using user groups. And we'll go into that a little bit further later on on how we can set up user groups. But actually for this, we can actually specify here which user groups have access to this content. So we've got three user groups here. Before it was on universal access, so all of our users had access to this content. But if it was actually only relevant for our East Coast users, for example, you can easily click this, and there we've got that course ready for that user group when we've published it. So I'm going to move that back. We're going to switch it back to universal access. And then finally, with the access rules, here we've got prerequisites. So this can be fantastic if this is part of um, a training course prior to your users going on site. So we could specify here if there was particular courses that had to be completed prior to them having access to this one. So it could be that actually before they take this um, safety knife course, we need them to do a new safety hire orientation. If so, again, it's simply just clicking, it will move over and there we've set up the prerequisite for this course. So that's access rules. Now, we've got some other great tabs here, such as briefcase, which I know Chris had mentioned briefly before. So say, for example, you had some compliance documents or some takeaway documents, you can easily upload them here and have them accessible for your users. And I also wanna highlight as well, our completion tab here. So it could be that actually we're wanting to 
look at the different completion requirements for these courses, whether it be that these courses are complete when a certain percentage of the courses are being complete. Now, this is looking at it on a course level. If we were wanting to get a little bit more granular with our completions, say, for example, we wanted one of our courses, well, all of our courses to have at least an 80% pass rate. So these courses have to be 80% um, complete before they can continue on. If I took us back to our lessons tab here, we can actually go into, so where we're at the course level right now, a little bit further down into the lesson level. So if I just open up this first course here, you're gonna see some of the similar tabs and this is looking at for this specific lesson. So again, with the completion, we could go here and actually set a minimum score. So if I was to select that, you can pop that in and then you know that your users are gonna to have to at least hit that minimum score to continue on and have that count as a completion. So that's kind of taking you over how, they, how we can start to make edits and changes within the course and the access rules. And now we've mentioned, let's have certificates for these course completions. So we've got something tangible there for the users to know they've completed this course, they've got this certificate. So I've taken us back just to our courseware page. And we're actually gonna go to our little drop down arrow in the top right hand corner, gonna press down and we're actually gonna to go to our app settings here. And this is gonna open up some of our different options for configuring our app settings. And you can see we've got again, some different tabs and quite straightforward certificates is where we're gonna be going today. So this is our certificates tab. So where we can start to configure the certificate. So whether we actually want course completion certificates or not, you don't have to have them. They're completely optional. But for the sake of this, I'm gonna click yes, because we do. Now, this is where we can start to make these changes to kind of fill out our course certificate and make them more applicable for our business and organization. So we can add in our name or um, for our company or brand, we can actually upload a course cover image, which would be here, and then also our brand logo. So again, giving it your company feel um, and just making it more familiar to your users. Um, so you can really start to make those tweaks to have this course certificate represent you. And then we are also gonna have a breakdown of those lessons which have been completed by our users as part of that course. So what they've actually been certified in. So that's course completions and how we've taken that course from the content library, made a few tweaks in terms of maybe adding a logo, looking at who's got access to it. But now we actually want to share it with our users. So this is where we're actually gonna be going over up to our toolbar again, down to our users tab and invite users. So we've got two options really for sharing, um, for inviting our users, sorry. Now, if you have your users' email addresses, you can, upload, um, you can invite them via email, whether this be a few individuals, you could up add in their email address, whether they're a learner or an admin, you can then even um, adjust the subject line. So you've been invited to join EDAP by your company name or even just yourself. And then you've also got the option as well to upload a bulk of users via email. So you simply download this template, fill in the desired fields, upload it again, and then you've got the option again to be able to edit your subject line and you can invite those users via email. Now, so Jeff, yeah? Just jump in here. We have a question from Michelle K. Um, what's the difference between learner and admin? And is the yeah. capability to author um, and also manage the LMS built into EdApp? Yeah, that's a great question. So the difference between a learner and admin, um, they're two of our user roles. So as an admin, you've got access to the whole LMS. So where we are right now, so we're sat within the LMS of EdApp and you can probably see at the top as well with our URL, we're sat within admin.edapp.com. Now for the learners, they're not gonna have access to this LMS side of EDAP. They're solely gonna have access to the learner side of things. So whether this be on the app, by, on mobile or tablet or on desktop, but the URL will be slightly different. It would be web.edap.com. 
Now, I'll go into some of the user roles in a moment, um, so you can start to see how we've actually got different user roles depending on what people will be doing within EDAP. So I'll take you there in a moment. And how about author? Well, an, an authoring? Yeah, uh, is authoring built into EDAP? Is that something that our users would have the capability to do? Yeah, 100%. So we've got a built-in authoring tool, um, so you're able to open up your courses, um, go into the authoring tool, make those changes. And if it was that you were wanting some further assistance with authoring or a little bit more information, we do host fortnightly on, um, authoring onboarding sessions, which walk you through that authoring process. So if you're interested in learning more about authoring, feel free to hop onto one of those sessions or even go to our YouTube channel, which has got some great videos by our designers walking you through authoring, but also with some really quite handy tips and tricks about how to make your content look amazing. Perfect. Michelle K really teach you up for a home run with that one. <laughs> I hope I did Michelle well. I hope, I hope she's happy. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so yeah, we've just kind of covered up how we can start to invite our users via email. Now we've also got the second option where we can start to invite our users via invite code. So if I was just to click that button there, this has taken us through to where we can enable an invite code. Now with invite code, this could be a universal invite code. So you can easily create this code. So we've got right now webinar 2021 and you could set this for universal. So you just send out that invite code, your users can sign up. It's gonna bring them into um, EDAP as learners, or we could even configure this for specific user groups. So you could have specific invite codes for those user groups. And when your learners sign up, it's gonna pop them straight into where they need to be within that user group. So again, super easy to set up. It would just be the case of putting in your invite code. You could add a logo if you wanted, and then just specifying your registration fields. So that's the invite code. Now, I'd mentioned before briefly, the option for user roles. So we'd gone through then admins, we'd gone through learners, but I'm taking us back to this invite users page a second. And I'm just gonna take us down to if we want to create a user with advanced permissions, because this is where we can kind of start to look at those user roles a little bit more in depth. So say for example, you've got a colleague who is gonna be solely creating content within the platform, but they don't really need access to everywhere else of the LMS. We could create, add in their email address, set them up with a password, and then we can set their roles. So it could be that actually, rather than them being an admin, we want them as a content author. They're going to be creating content and looking at an analytics report specific to how that content is being performing. Or if you wanted a manager of a site, so say, for example, we had those user groups for each site within the business, you could have a manager as um, set for each of those sites, and they're going to have access to your analytical reports called the manager report, and they can see a breakdown of the performance of their user group. So it's really great to be able to use them user roles to make sure that everyone's kind of where they need to be within the LMS, um, as not everyone needs to be an admin. We say normally the best maximum of admins for the account is about three to four. So yeah, that's how we'd start to invite those users. And when we've got them, we can start to edit user roles and ch change it up a little bit. So fantastic. What we're going to do now is actually to start to take a little look at our analytics. So we've um, deployed our content, we've invited our users, and now we want to look at how our users are performing. So we can drop down to our analytics tab here. And again, feel free to explore the reports that are available to you because we've got a great range. But the ones we're going to kind of highlight today within this um, webinar is going to be our performance dashboard, our course completion by user, and then also that rapid refresh. So I'm going to start with course completions by user because what's great about this analytical report is the option for you to actually export this data if need be. So. Um, we've got the option to have a look at the course completions on a breakdown of the users. So we can see here we've got Bobby, who's got a few courses um, assigned to him. And we can see that actually he's um, completed the three lessons required within this hazardous material, um, hazardous energy course. And if we want to export that again, 
super easy, just up here in the top right hand corner. And if it was that we wanted to filter this information by user group, by the username, by the course, we can do. And then again, we've got our performance dashboard. This is one of our newer analytical reports. And this is great for just being able to have a look at how your content's performing, how your users are performing. And again, you can export this data, but it's great for just being able to have a look at either an overview or actually drill down either in specific courses, user groups, or even users. So we can see here within this account, we've got 25 courses published, only two course completions. But again, I'm not stressing too much of you, Chris, this is just our webinar account. But yeah, you can really start to have a look at how your courses are performing, how your user groups are performing, and also how your, who's your highest performing user. And I'm happy to say that out of two that have completed courses, mine's the highest complete, highest performing user. So that's a pat on my back there for myself. But yeah, it's a fantastic way for you being able to kind of have a look and see where your users are at. And if it was that you were wanting to export it for other compliance purposes, you can do, you've got that option. And then finally, in terms of the analytics, um, last but not least, the rapid refresh. So again, a really fantastic tool at being able to see where your users are at um, in the, by just simply deploying a quick quiz. And they're so engaging. You could set up a leaderboard as well if you're wanting to initiate some kind of healthy competition between your teams. And for yourself, you can see within the analytics, a breakdown of which rapid refresh quizzes have been launched, the start date, the end date, also the status of it. Is it, um, has it ended? When was it actually deployed? And how many completions? So, and then again, if I was just to click into one of these, I clicked one with zero completions. <laughs> so it's not gonna be the, the best looking analytics right now, but you can get an idea. We've got, we had right all my users. Board. <laughs> I know, I picked, of course I picked the one with no completions. But yeah, again, you can really start to have a look at the users, um, the, the number of attempts and of how they've responded. And it's just great at being able to kind of start to have a look at how everything's performing. Where's everyone at in comparison to where I need them to be? Have they achieved or do they need a little bit of extra support? Do I need to offer a bit of a helping hand to get them where they need to be? But yeah, I think that's taken us through the flow of um, that live demo, Chris. I'm keen to see and hear what questions we've had and kind of what we can help people out with. Well, we actually, that's good. We actually have a couple of questions that have come in. Brilliant. Um, so first things first, I'm going to toss a question from Jessica S over to you, Jess. Mm -hmm. um, how often does the performance dashboard update? Um, I believe, I mean, Chris, you might have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's every few hours. Yeah, yeah you're should, nodding, that's good. <laughs> should be every two to four hours. Yeah. Um, although, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, uh, but we've got some reworks coming for the, the rate at which our dashboards are being refreshed in the very near term. So stay tuned for an update on that. Uh, we have a question from Lee C. Uh, can we upload external certificates to the LMS as part of the system? Uh, I'll handle this one. Jess, if you want to just bring us back to the certificate page. Cool. Lee, so there's three things that you can do here. First things first, um, you mentioned if you wanted a manual handling certificate or a first aid at work certificate. Um, well, you could just let the certificate feature do this part for you. As Jess had mentioned, what you're seeing on the screen is a bit of an example. And yes, you can customize the graphic elements of this so that we've got your company's badge on there, um, your company's name and logo. Um, but the pieces of text on this screen will actually be custom. So if your employees are taking a manual handling or a first date at work course, what you're going to see is a certificate of completion for manual handling. And all these little check marks down there will be the actual lessons that your employees have completed. So if that's sufficient, just allow this to do that work for you. Now, if you wanted to do this a little bit more manually uh, and custom, custom build entire certificates for your audience, that's going to take a little bit more work. Um, but if that's something that you want to do, our platform is totally capable of allowing you to do that. So if you want to just take us, Jess, on over to the briefcase for a moment. Yeah, of course. Now, these won't be custom built, but you have the ability to upload your own PDF documents to a briefcase, um, which will allow users to download or access these documents 
and you can set prerequisites. So the effect is if you upload a power or a PDF, I should say, uh, and have the completion of said course as a prerequisite to accessing this document, you in effect have a, a custom certificate. Now it's not gonna have your employees' names on it. Um, you could just have, uh, have those documents be blank and allow those employees to print those out, fill them in, or you could do that for your employees. Now, the last option is using analytics. So if you wanna take us over to course completion by user or by user group, yeah. And what you can do here is, okay, we really need these documents to be both custom in appearance and we want our employees' names on them, but we don't want to use the automated uh, certificates that are generated by EDAP. Um, what you can do is export a list of employees that have this quarter or this week created, a, uh, a, or sorry, completed a course. Um, you'll be able to feed those into your custom certificates, right? Because we can export them as a spreadsheet. It's just a matter of, of you dragging, dropping their names in place, hitting print, uh, and repeating the process for however many certificates you're looking to deliver. Um, so uh, whatever your certificate needs are, no matter how complex, we have the ability to make this as easy or as custom for you as you need. Depends on which one is the priority. I know that was a bit of a long-winded answer. Um, but I think certificates are important to this crowd. So good question, Lee. Um, and then Jessica Stout, are you planning to update the manager page? So it shows email and name. Jessica, again, I don't know how much I'm allowed to say, but we absolutely have some work coming to the manager report in the very near term. Brilliant. I don't let the cat out of the bag there. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> the Daily Mail will be after you. They'll write up a story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Dave Chalmers is not gonna be happy with me. But uh, those are some really great questions and I'd love to hear more. I think we actually still have a little bit of time, um, yeah. five or 10 minutes. So if you have any questions or if there's anything that you saw today that you want me and Jess to elaborate on, just let us know. Uh, here's one from Justin. Yeah. Justin L asks, is it possible to view a list of people who have not completed an assigned course and send out push notifications to those users? He's teeing us up. Justin oh my God, he's teeing us up. Justin, this is my favorite feature to mention on demos because this is so relevant for so many people. And I think we all know those people who say they've completed a course, they haven't, or they say they'll do it and they haven't. Yeah. So yeah, within our analytics here, now, I want to mention that this is, is an, actual, an actionable report. So this is one of our pro features, but it's so worth it. <laughs> so with our analytics tab here, I'm actually going to take us down to the engagement tab and we're going to go to reports. Now, within the reports, we can have a look at users with partial completions, which we've got here. But we can also look at users who've logged in and not started a course and also users who've never logged in and also inactive users with low completions. Now, my favorite thing about these two, so users with partial completions and users who've logged in, is that we've actually got the option here as well as being able to send um, an email, like a push email or actually download and export a CSV, sorry. We've got this push notification option here. So if I was to click push, push notification, we can actually start to change the title, change the body. And this is a great way of being able to send these three people here a little nudge saying, hey, you've got some content, like time yeah. to take it. And this is really compelling because what you can do is just like in 30 seconds, identify a single job site or user group in this case, find all the users who have less than 100% completion for a critical piece of compliance, send them a nudge, right? Um, so yeah, we, that, this is an awesome feature. Yeah, while we're on this feature as well, so this is within the actionable reports. If it was, say for example, we've been talking about different job sites. Say for example, I had um, job site A who I've actually got some new content coming out. We can actually go to the users tab and down to their user groups select the user group and do the same similar action of actually being able to send a push notification. So this time it's not just to those people with um, partial completions or who have a log logged in. This is the whole user group. And this could be just a simple one being like, hey guys, a new course on um, fire safety is being yeah. released. Or we're doing a recertification coming up next Yeah, month. We need when you guys all to go back through the OSHA course. 
100% yeah you can tell it's my it's one of my favorite features I think they're so great yeah <laughs> brilliant I promise Justin L isn't an EdApp employee uh <laughs> are you sure I think <laughs> you did really tear up then I love it <laughs> All right, perfect. uh we have time for a few more questions I'd love to hear them it looks like we've got a few from Elizabeth S uh is it possible to give the user author or content reviewer role in the free version of EdApp Elizabeth yes absolutely um, access to the authoring tool comes with every EdApp plan, and that includes the free plan. Um, so you can have as many authors as you need. And even if you have a paid plan, you're not paying any extra for those authors. They just count as a singular user license, right? We're not charging huge exorbitant fees for access to the authoring tool. Awesome. Um, and uh, Michelle K says, can you show me the tab where you build the certificate? We looked at that a couple of times today, but if you want to just uh, highlight it for us once more, Jess. Um, yeah, of course. Because it's a bit, it's a bit obscure. Yeah, I'm going to take us. Um, I'll take us from our coursework tab, just because this is such a familiar site for so many of our users. So I know that a lot of you are normally used to hopping around the tabs at the top here, and it's actually over on our right hand side. There's a little down arrow, and this is where we can start to have a look at our account settings, and with that, our app settings. Now, I'll take us through the process. So we're going to the tab here with certificates and it's brought us to it. But if it is that you ever got a little bit stuck and you're wanting to find this in your own time, feel free to check out our support center. There's a really great range of different support articles walking you through how to complete certain actions, use certain features, and even finding course completion certificates. We've got a support article on that. So if you ever get stuck, the support article, or even just our live chat down here in the bottom right hand corner, always your best places to head. Brilliant, Chris. How are we looking? We got any more questions? I think we might have a few more coming in. Just a moment. Elizabeth S asks, is it possible to let learners have certificates even if they've only completed certain modules in a course? I don't believe so. I believe certificates only come from completion. Actually, maybe it is. Um, so if you want to bring us in, um, Jess, yeah. back on over to the courseware tab. Yeah. I believe you can mark certain lessons within a course uh, as considered optional in order for you to get completion marks. For, I think yeah, you can um, simply open. You have to take us into this one. We're going to find this one out live. You're doing this by the seat of her pants, Jess. <laughs> Rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Um, so specific lessons required, that's the option for us, Elizabeth. Um, so yes, you can set mandatory modules in a course. You can have specific modules that are optional. And if a user completes every mandatory lesson within that course, they'll have a 100% completion mark, then they'll have access to that automated certificate. So yeah, great. I was not 100% sure that we could do that. So I'm really glad we found out together. We're all learning today. <laughs> <laughs> Learning is the theme. Um, okay, perfect. So um, any more questions? Keep them coming. You guys are really asking great questions today. We love to hear them. And I think mm -hmm. we still have a, a couple more minutes. So if we can get one or two more across, we will make our day. <laughs> Michelle says you guys are the best. Thank oh. you. Uh, much Thank love you. to the UK. Thank you for joining us today. Um, perfect. We'll just give it another 30 seconds here, make sure that uh, everyone gets a chance to chime in. Justin says, great webinar. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Justin. Oh. I think we're done here. I think so. And we've had some great compliments to leave us with smiles this wide when we leave. Yeah. Exactly. Like I'm blushing a little bit, I'm loving it. <laughs> Thank you from South Africa. Awesome, really? wow. Everyone's trying all over the world. Okay, well, listen, uh, if you want us to elaborate on anything that you saw here today, um, just get in touch with us. Get in touch with me or Jess or, or anyone from your specific market uh, at, at App. You can ask, you can prompt the live chat. Jess can show you where that is right now. Yeah, um, just down here. Get in touch with us right away. And uh, we can uh, show you what we've done here on screen in your very own EdApp account. Make sure that it's set up for you. So there's no strange, uh, there's no question that's too strange for us. Um, just let us know how we can help. And uh, thank you everyone for chiming on. Jess. Thank you for being a lovely co-host today. Oh, thank you, Chris. You've been great as always. All right, perfect. And I, uh, I think that's a wrap. Brilliant. Thanks so much, everyone. Cheers.